This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Iran and the U.S. are set to meet for talks in Baghdad. Why was Iran excluded from a recent Islamic conference in Pakistan? Will Iran and the U.S. come to a final agreement in Baghdad, or is this the final showdown? All this and more on Link TV's Mosaic Intelligence Report. Iraq's neighbors, including Iran and Syria, have agreed to join U.S. and British representatives at a regional conference in Baghdad on March 10th to discuss the Iraqi security crisis. Whilst much ink has been devoted to speculations about the outcome of the Baghdad conference, there has been little mention of Iran's absence from a key summit in Islamabad this week, in which foreign ministers from seven Muslim nations met to discuss the security situation in the Middle East. This one-day meeting in Islamabad brought together representatives from Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Turkey. Nations that Iran has recently accused of conspiring against it with the U.S. Seven Muslim countries met in Islamabad to collaborate with Israel and the U.S. If you are meeting to work for the good of Muslim countries, why are you doing your work in secret? The Bush administration has successfully managed to galvanize an anti-Iranian coalition in the Middle East, bringing together pro-Western Arab and Muslim regimes like Saudi Arabia and Pakistan, regimes that have raised a strong concern about an Iranian arc of influence growing in the region. Ironically, the U.S. has succeeded in building a regional campaign against Iran, even though a recent survey conducted in six Middle Eastern states revealed that Iran is not perceived by the populace to be a major threat to the region. In the survey conducted by the University of Maryland and Zogby International, Respondents were asked to identify two countries that pose the biggest threat to their nation states. 85% said Israel, and 72% said the United States. In contrast, only 11% identified Iran. The population may see little in the way of an Iranian threat, but their governments seem willing to see one and to toe the anti-Iranian line being set by the U.S. Given this carefully orchestrated anti-Iranian agenda, why is the U.S. administration opting to sit at the same table with Iran? Is it due to Congress's anger at the failure of the Iraq war? Or is it because President Bush has finally decided to listen to the Baker-Hamilton recommendations? Or is the conference in Baghdad simply going to be the background for a final showdown between the U.S. and Iran? Certainly, Iran is unlikely to make any concessions on its nuclear program and the meeting gives the U.S. the opportunity to make a public show of reaching out to Iran one last time before it finally launches its airstrikes from its two aircraft carriers anchored in the Persian Gulf. The U.S. will not be playing the maverick. The green light for an attack has been given by the seven Muslim countries that met in Pakistan. This is the opinion of most Arab analysts that I have been monitoring in the region, with some predicting an imminent strike date as early as April. This notion that the United States is getting ready to attack Iran is simply ridiculous. Having said that, all options are on the table. These were the words of George W. Bush in February 2005. I'm Jamal Dejani for the Mosaic Intelligence Report. To learn more about this program or to share your thoughts, visit us at linktv.org slash mosaic. This program was brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. television network devoted to global and national news with uncompromising documentaries and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world.